How far would you go in the name of honour? Would you kill for the name of your family or your kingdom? Perhaps you would commit unspeakable acts in order to preserve its name. Would you even consider dying in the name of your homeland or its cause? I know a group that would do all of these and more. I speak, of course, about the knights of our realm, the Windguard. A group that firmly believes that honour outlasts those who embrace it. They are knights and champions who not only serve on the battlefield, but also travel the lands as peacekeepers, and in order to prove that the Queen of the Scald is still in control. After all, little says I'm the most powerful person in the room than having hundreds of dragons fly overhead, all under your beck and call. In many ways, the Wingard are stretched thin these days, especially when you compare them to the other kingdoms. But unlike the other kingdoms, the quality is unmatched as Wingards go through some of the most rigorous training of all of them. And all of them are, in fact, Dragoneers. These Knights of the Realm serve as the Kingdom's primary military, but that was not always the case. In the early days of the Realm's history, during the Age of Madness, the Skeld primarily relied on a standing force, as Dragoneering had yet to be commonplace, but it was growing. Though a tiny state at the time, the Skeld did have Dragoneers. Back then, they were under a different name and had a different purpose, but in many ways they were the predecessors of the Windguard we have now. I refer to the Sunchaser Corps, but their purpose was solely to protect the reigning monarch. They had some strange customs, but since they are more secretive than their descendants, most have been forgotten to time. But this is probably for the best, as most remember why they were disbanded in the first place. Being the only Dragoneers of the Kingdom at the time, when even the practice itself was still in common, made them near untouchable, especially in their homelands. This slowly resulted in their downfall, as being a Sun Chaser became less about your combat might, and more about what family you are from. They became more decadent, spending less time on their actual jobs, and more time having lavish feasts and parties. I mean, have you seen their saddles? They're downright gorgeous! They even became more brutal as time went on, which led to people fearing what was supposed to be the icons of the realm, which was the final nail in their coffin, if you ask me. They were eventually disbanded under the rule of the mighty warrior queen Strigita, who realized that they were more of a hindrance than a help, so she disbanded them in the end, or rather reformed them, as no doubt you've seen a descendant of a sun chaser in Wingard armor. In fact, some of the richer families got to keep their family's dragon armor, but for all important purposes, they were not the same organisation. She reformed the military in so many ways, making Dragoneering not only common, but the standard. Not only increasing the quantity, but the quality of the army as well. After her incredible reforming process was complete, she began expanding the borders of the Skeld, invading neighbouring cities and tribal lands. Some of which were more accepting of their new rulers than others. Rebellions still happen every now and again to this day, and the borders have changed a little over the years, but she did lay the groundwork for the massive kingdom we all now know. A remarkable woman, far ahead of her time. Were it not for her, the Scald might have just been another footnote in history, and the Windguard, as we know them, would not exist. And I wouldn't have had such an interesting group of knights to talk about. Now that would be a crying shame. Over the years, the Windguard have become beloved among most people under the Scald's crown, of course, those who hate authority will likely still run away in fear should they see one, and previously mentioned, rebellions do still happen. But as the Skeldon culture and society slowly integrates these cities and tribes, I'm sure this will become a thing of the past. In fact, this effect can already be seen throughout the land, as more and more women are taking up higher end positions in their lands, and the Scout, being a slightly matriarchal society, will likely have a hand in this, if perhaps indirectly. This brings me to my next topic as some accuse the Wingard of being elitists. That strikes me as a bit harsh, but not undeserved. It was only a few hundred years ago that people of tribal backgrounds were not even able to serve as Wingards, and I'm not going to say that it's impossible for a man to reach the higher positions, but I'm going to ask you when the last time you saw a male captain was. And it's not a coincidence that the same noble families keep ending up at the higher end command positions. But I will say, they do earn this position, as Wingard training is nothing to scoff at. Their hair is shaved, and all of their possessions are taken from them. Then, they are given a spear and a shield, and are made to train with them every day, until their bodies break, and then some more. 
Eventually, once the stage is complete, they are given the iconic dragon of Scoured Lands, the Iron Wing. It's no shock that the Wingard ride these beasts exclusively, as they are nearly found only within Scoured Lands, and are remarkably social creatures, and make perfect companions for any would-be knight. Lots of accidents happen during the first fights, as riding a dragon is not exactly easy, as I would know. Of course, they continue their hand-to-hand -hand training throughout this time as well, making their days more and more painful, until their trainers finally think they are ready, upon which the dragon is taken away from them, and they are to be given a suit of armour, and more importantly, their cape, to symbolise that they are now a true Wingard, if still in training. Their final task is simple but difficult. They are to travel the lands on foot in order to find a mount of their very own to bond with, hopefully at an early age. This trial also helps them get to know their kingdom better if they have yet to fully explore it themselves, as they are expected to give up their life for it should they need to. It usually takes a few months to a year for a trainee to befriend and train a dragon to be their mount, and as far as my knowledge, they're not given any clear rules on how to acquire said dragon, so perhaps they're allowed to just buy an egg and start from scratch, no doubt an easier task if you come from a wealthy dragon breeding family. But once this dragon is ready, they are to return to their trainer to go through a series of trials to show if they are ready to be a legionnaire. If all goes well, they are to be given a new cape to symbolise this. And the new Wingard and their dragon are to join a new unit, where they will serve on the battlefield or keep the peace, whatever their kingdom requires of them. They are then to start the tradition of never cutting one's hair and to have it all in one long braid. This helps show how long the Legionnaire has served in the army at a quick glance. They are only allowed to cut their hair again once they retire. However, I find most veterans don't do this. They have, understandably, grown quite proud of being able to retire and let their long hair show their worth. It's also led to the saying, braided to the knee, becoming commonplace, implying someone has tremendous fighting experience. You'll find that quite a lot of Wingards are proud, actually as well as loyal to a fault to their queen and kingdom. Partly because it was beaten into them, but also because they dedicated their whole life to the kingdom. To them, the individual is not as important as the whole. What is their life, but a servant to the family and the kingdom as a whole? It's this mindset that's allowed the kingdom to live on as long as it has, and will likely live on for another age at the very least. The Age of Ashes certainly isn't going to be the end of it, and even if it is, I doubt the Wingards will disband should it fall. Like the Marauders and Phantoms, I suspect they would outlive their original society. They've become far too famed and iconic. Their training can get even harder, by the way. I haven't even mentioned the requirements Legionnaires go through in order to become one of the Elite Corps, the Queen's current guard, who have come under a bit of scrutiny recently for their overly harsh training. And I know every gritty detail of it, as I have a friend who's in the Queen's Guard, and she's told me everything. It starts when a Legionnaire volunteers to become a member of the Corps. They are then stripped of all of their possessions yet again, but this time they are left with absolutely nothing. They are then tied to their new Queen's Guard spear, where it is then thrusted into the massive frozen Valkyrian steam. Upon waking, they are given one simple order. Crawl back to your Queen. They are then left alone. Of course, not all Legionnaires go through such horrific treatment and after a while you might get a more cosier position, such as guarding the mostly uninhabited island of Liaga. Since there's little trouble there, bar the odd wild dragon attack, you would probably get a way of doing little more than just training. Of course, not everyone's so lucky to get a position like that, but it does happen. There are some tragic tales in the Windguard Order though. As previously mentioned, there are some legionnaires of tribal descent and they're usually tasked with dealing with members of the same tribe they are from. I've heard more than one tale of a Wingard having to kill her own family in order to prove her loyalty. In fact, I suspect this is done on purpose to do just that. It's almost bizarre, as emphasis on family is very important to Wingard beliefs, but I suspect they rectify this by having them marry into a Skeldian household, then have their descendants, who would be considered a full scout at this point, to rule over those same tribal lands. Perhaps this is their plan on integrating the more rebellious people. It might work. Keep in mind that this kingdom is still expanding, if slowly, so cementing its already conquered lands should be its priority, if you ask me at least. 
I hope you've learned something new about the Wingards today, the saviors of our lands, or at least I hope you got something out of my madman's ramblings. Thank you for listening to my tales. I'm the Ashborn. Feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. But, till next we meet, fellow traveller. Have a good day.